Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Learn with Anirudh. Now, these are some super important concepts that we're going to be discussing in the next couple of videos in this series where we're going to be discussing of how you guys can work with all these important sorting algorithms that are very popularly asked in all of the interviews. So in this particular episode, we're going to take a look at the most popular one, which is bubble sort. So what are we waiting for? Let's get started. So all right guys, let's get started then. If you haven't had a chance to subscribe to the channel yet, do take a second to hit the subscribe button because all these sorting algorithms that we're going to be discussing one after the other, as soon as I publish them, you guys will be the first ones to get notified about this. So you guys will be the first ones to learn about them as well. Now, uh, as, I've, as I've told you, there are multiple algorithms that you guys should know, especially when it comes to sorting. And if you have ever given interviews, you know that this is a very, very common concept that gets asked in almost all the programming interviews, especially if you're a fresher or a beginner, you have to be thorough in all of these concepts. Now, uh, we're going to be discussing five different searching algorithms in the next five episodes. In this episode, as I just told you, we're going to be taking a look at bubble sort. So to help you guys understand bubble sort, we're going to have multiple examples that we're going to discuss step by step and we're going to recap how the entire algorithm works. We're going to go to Collab and we're going to take a look at the Python code. It's a very simple piece of code. And eventually after that, we're also going to have quiz question where you guys can sort all of this on your own and then you can head to the comment section to give me your answers. Right? Well, what are we waiting for? Let's get started with bubble sort now. Bubble sort is a concept that we actually use in our daily life, even though you may not know it. As always with Learn with Anirudh, let's get started with an example to help you guys relate to this better. So take a look at the images that you see on your screen right now. There are two images, even though they seem very similar, there are certain differences. Now what can you observe? What are the differences that you can find in the images you see? It's very simple. The image on the left is where people are standing in a random height order. They're, they're just chatting. Think of them as uh, school students or college students on the first day of college. Think of the people on the right side as those exact same guys, but they are standing in the increasing order of the height, right? The people on the left are standing in an unordered fashion. People on the right are standing in the increasing order of the right. So the person on the leftmost, the red dressed uh, person, she happens to be the shortest among the group and the guy with the blue t-shirt and the uh, gold colored pant, I guess, is the one who's the tallest. Now, how would we use bubble sort to go from the unordered height and eventually go, go to a place where all of these guys are standing in their increasing order? How did we get this sorted? Now, I use bubble sort here, so I'm going to show you how this is done. Take a look at this. Let us actually assign numbers based on the height of each of these people, right? So the person who's the shortest gets the number one. The person who's the tallest gets the number five assigned to them. Now, I'm just assigning numbers to them to make sure to help you have a numerical example and a relatability to that. Fantastic. Now, we know that each of them have their own numbers to work with. So let's see how we can uh, sort them based on their height now. This was the original order that we discussed, correct? Take a look at this. The, uh, the unordered picture that you guys just saw, it was exactly this. So as soon as you assign the numbers to them, they become 5, 3, 1, 2 and 4. Okay, so let's have the numbers right now and let's get started with bubble sort straight away. The first step in bubble sort is always to go to the leftmost element that you have and eventually sort it until that element goes to its final place. In this case, which is the leftmost element? As you can see, I've already highlighted it. It's 5, correct? Now, what we are going to do is all of these sorting algorithms, they work based on a loop. They work in an iteration to solve a problem, correct? So here, what we're going to do is we're going to take five and we're going to compare five with all the other elements out there. And eventually after the final comparison, five is going to be put in its final place. If you did not get what I meant, take a look at this on your screen right now. What we are going to do is simply we're going to say, hey, the guy, the fifth guy is going to say, hey, he's going to compare his height to three. And he's going to say, hey, my height is greater than yours. Five is greater than three. So let's swap our height. So what happens is pretty simple. Three and five change their heights. Three goes to five position. Five goes to the third position. Correct? Pretty simple. Now what happens? Is five the tallest guy or is five in, the, in his correct position right now? Absolutely not. So five is going to talk to one and five is going to say, hey, 
I am the one who's taller here. Five is greater than one. So I want to swap heights. So one is going to agree to that. And eventually one is going to move to the left. Five is going to move to the right. Now, five is still not in his final position, correct? So five is going to go to two again and five is going to say, hey, you know, five is greater than two. I want to swap places. Two agrees and eventually they swap. Five is still not in his final place. There's one more comparison to do and that is with four this time. Five says, hey, four, I am bigger than you and eventually I have to go to my final place. So let me move. Simple. They swap. Fantastic. Now, if you just do it manually in your head, if you bubble sort manually in your head, you already know that the answer to this is one, two, three, four, five, correct? Take a look at this. Five is in its final position. The number that I've highlighted in green color is sitting in his final position right now. So by the end of one pass in bubble sort, the element that is at the leftmost position is basically going to go and sit in its final place. But this is still not sorted. If you look at the screen, it says three, one, two, four, five. This is not the this is not the order that we're looking for. We're looking for the ascending order, correct? So what we're gonna do? We're gonna repeat the entire same thing again. The first element this time is three instead of five. So three is gonna compare herself with one. Three says, "I am the taller one. I'm supposed to be moving to the right." And eventually, three moves to the right. And then three realizes that she's still not in her final position there. She compares herself with two. She says, hey, I am taller than you, so I need to move. And eventually they make the decision to swap again. But the next thing is that three has to compare herself with four. As per the algorithm, unless the algorithm fails is only when you know that that particular person is, is in his or her correct place, right? So look at this. Three compares herself to four and says, hey, if three is greater than four, let us swap places. But unfortunately, four at this moment of time says, hey, sorry, we're not swapping places because I am taller than you. So they don't swap places. So what happens next? Eventually, four starts comparing now. Four is going to say uh, to five right now, hey, so three tried to swap places with me. Now let me see if I can swap places with you. Four compares himself with five. And eventually, there is no need for a swap because five is again the bigger number. So as you can see, at the end of this, the array is now swapped, correct? This is a real life example of using bubble sort. But then when you actually take a look at the algorithm and when you want to understand it step by step of exactly what happens, there is something else here. There is a little bit more mystery that I want you guys to understand. We're done with the real life example. Now you know to a good extent how bubble sort works. So let us take up one more example and we're going to approach this as if we were using the exact algorithm of bubble sort. Now, again, what is the first step? You let me know. The first step here is to go pick up the first element. The first element is six. And eventually we compare six with the next position there. Six is greater than two. What do we do if six is greater than two? We do a simple swap, correct? Now see, six and two got swapped. Six is not still in its final position. So what's the next step? Compare six and five. If six is greater than five, we're going to swap the elements. Is six greater than five? Of course it is. So what do we do? We swap. Six is still not in its final role. Six has to compare itself with three now. And as soon as six compares itself with three, it's going to find out if it has to swap or not. In this case, yes, it has to swap and boom, eventually three and six swap their roles. Now six might be in its final position. You might think so because you're looking at it visually. The algorithm doesn't know if six is in final position or not. So what it's going to do is it's going to still compare six and nine. It's going to ask a question. Hey, is six greater than nine? This time the answer is not true. This time the answer is false. Six is not greater than nine. It means that six is now in its final position. Simple, right? What do we do now? Even though six is in its final position, the rest of the array is still messed up. So we need to go back to the first element again and do this all over again. Fantastic. Let's go ahead and do it. Let's let's start the second pass. Now we go to the first position again. We compare two and five is two greater than five. No, it's not. So we're not going to swap anything. And then we're going to move to five. We're going to check if five is greater than three. Is five greater than three here, ladies and gentlemen? Yes, it is. So what do we do? We just swap three and five. Now algorithm doesn't know that it is in the right place. So it has to still perform a comparison between five and six is going to ask is five greater than six. The answer is no, five is not greater than six. It means at this moment of time, it means that it is in its final position. Again, it's going to check with six. It's going to check if six is greater than nine and eventually it's going to say false. So at this moment of time, at the end of second pass, five, six and nine are at their final position. 
But here is where you need to pay attention. 2, 3, 5, 6, 9 is a sorted array. We have already sorted this. But as per the algorithm, it still wants to check one more time if all the elements are in its order or not. So it's going to compare 2 and 3. It's going to compare 3 and 5. It's going to compare 5 and 6. It's going to compare 6 and 9. And as soon as the third pass ends, this is when the algorithm realizes that now the entire array is actually sorted. So at this moment of time, this array is sorted and so are you because with these two examples, I bet you guys could understand how bubble sort works. Now let's quickly take a second to understand how we went about sorting this. What was step number one? Step number one was to pick the leftmost element and start comparing this element with every other element ahead of itself. As soon as it finds a discrepancy, as soon as you realize that the element you have is greater than the next element, what do you do? You simply swap. You swap until the first element you picked goes to its final place. After that, you come back again to the new first element right now, try finding, try to compare itself with all the adjacent elements, keep going. You keep doing this until finally you have your entire array which is sorted. Pretty simple, right? Now, bubble sort is simply the most simple algorithm you can work with. But when you are sitting in an interview, when you are asked to implement this or when you ask to explain how this works, there's a good chance you can mess up. But now you have two beautiful examples to tell you how it goes about. And as always, we are never done with theory. So right now, let's quickly open up Google Collab. Uh, Google Collab is a place, uh, it's a Jupyter notebook where we can play around with Python code. So let me quickly show you and explain to you how bubble sort algorithm works programmatically in Python. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are here at Google Collab right now. And let me quickly open up the piece of code. Now, even though this looks like a long, lengthy piece of code, it's extremely simple. Let me explain. First line, right? Uh, I hope this is zoomed enough for all of you guys to see it. I can zoom in one more step and yeah, this should be better. Take a look at the first line here. The first line is basically our input array, the array that we want sorted. 53124 is that height example that we saw. So I'm going to give that exact array as my input array. Now, this is the second array we're going to discuss. It's a comment for now. You can ignore. So we're just printing a message saying, hey, this is the input array and all, all I'm doing is printing the input array. You're going to see why this statement is important later. Okay, so let's get to the function. Now I have a function called bubble and I'm passing the input array to this function. So what is this function doing for me? This function, first of all, should make sure that you have your Python interpreter can access each of the elements that are present in the array. Now an array can have one element, an array can have 100 elements. Your Python interpreter should have the capability to move through each of these elements first of all, right? It has to move only then that it can compare. Now this first loop that we have, the i loop, the i for loop that we have is basically moving from the first element until the length of the input array. Basically I'm telling it, hey, you start moving from five, move all the way to four, move from the first element, move until the last element. And then we have another loop. Okay, this is interesting. Why do we want another loop here? Isn't the first loop enough? Well, this loop will actually help you compare each of the elements. The first loop will move Python across each of the elements. But once you move it across each of the elements, you need another loop to actually compare each element, right? Now, this is very simple. If Python is actually here right now, let's assume that it wants to compare five and three, or it wants to compare three and one to bring it to three we need one loop and to help it compare three and one to help it compare it with the next elements, we need another loop. And that is exactly why we have the J loop. You can see that we have, we have considered it until the length of input array minus I minus one. Now this is done to make sure you can have the chance to compare this element, the element that you are at right now with the element that is immediately after that. Python indexes everything from zero. You know this, if you do not know this, make sure you watch my a uh, linear search and binary search episode where we've discussed why Python does that and how it works as well. So the first element in Python's index always starts with zero and not with one. To make sure we have an adjustment towards that, we need to make sure the second loop is optimized for it. Okay, done. Now we know the first loop will take us through all the elements. The second loop will help us compare. But where is the actual comparison happening? Look at this. This is the most simple statement which helps the entire bubble sort algorithm work. If the current element that you are at is greater than the very next element, J is basically the index of that position, correct? So if your current element is greater than the element which is immediately next to it, just have a simple logic where you're swapping. 
Now, if you ever worked with Python, you will know the logic to swap two elements by making use of a temporary variable and you can also swap without using a temporary variable. Now all we're doing is we're creating a temporary variable, we're storing the value of the, the position j in it, we're taking j, putting it in j plus 1 and we're taking j plus 1 and putting it in temp. This is the classic most simplest way of how you can swap two elements. So whatever was in uh, input array of j, now will go and sit in input array of j plus 1 and whatever was in j plus 1 will sit with j. So it's simply swapping. If it was 2 and 1, now it's going to be what? After this piece of code runs, it's going to be 1 and 2. We have just swapped these two elements, correct? Now, even though it just seems like we're doing it once, are we doing it once? Not really. We're going to keep doing it until we compare all the elements that are out there. See, basically, when you are at the last position, you cannot compare this to anything else. This is where we need i minus 1. When you are at this element, when you have compared at the last but one position, you can only compare this with the next element, correct? You cannot compare 4 with anything else if it is sitting at its last position. That is the reason why we need this particular piece of code. Now it's very simple. Uh, until here is the heart of the entire logic. Basically two loops, one comparison statements and three lines to actually swap it. So the logic of bubble sort is super simple. So all I'm trying to do is I'm going to call the function. I'm going to say, hey, now just take the input array, put it into bubble sort. And eventually we are getting started with the sorting process. And at the last I have a message to say, hey, we use bubble sort here and this is the output. Let me print this out so you guys have a better picture. Look, the reason I told you we need these two print statements is only for a fact that we can see the input statement. Now look, our input array was 53124 and when we used bubble sort, it sorted it for us and now we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. The sorting was correct. It was perfect. Now a lot of you all might have read this particular comment. If we change the greater than to less than, we're going to sort this in the descending order. Now let me actually change this to the descending order. So all we are trying to do is, hey, if the current element is shorter than the next one, swap it again. So what is going to happen in this particular case, the, the biggest element, the most largest element is going to come sit at its leftmost position instead of the rightmost position. And as in, as in when you compare, it's going to be basically, you know, all, uh, uh, you know, placing the elements in the descending order rather than the ascending order. Now let me execute this. As soon as I execute this, you can see that our input array was the same, 53124. But take a look at our bubble sort right now. So if ever in your interviews, you are asked a question saying, hey, now I have a bubble sort algorithm which uh, basically compares in the ascending order. How do I do it in the descending order? Ladies and gentlemen, you have the answer to it. All you have to do is change this greater than to less than to help the element. If they ask the logic behind it, it's simple. Instead of taking the greater, greatest element and moving it to the rightmost position, you're taking it and moving it to the leftmost position. And based on that, everything else, all the other comparisons happen. So this, ladies and gentlemen, is very simply how you can go about performing bubble sort. Now, let me actually show you another example. You know, we had another uh, array that we discussed. This is the second array that we actually discussed in the example where I told you I'm going to be helping you understand this algorithmatically. 62539. Now, let me go about executing this particular one, this simple example that I just showed you guys. And eventually, as soon as I hit the play button, you can see that our input array was 62539 and the bubble sort made it 23569. It is basically correct. Bubble sort worked perfectly. So ladies and gentlemen, th this three or four lines is at the heart of how bubble sort works. And now you guys know how bubble sort works too. So let's quickly go ahead and wrap up this episode on bubble sort. Now I want you guys to have your own arrays to implement bubble sort on your own. So here are three questions, three quiz questions that I want you guys to sort. As you can see, there are certain negative elements here as well. Minus 100, minus 1. Don't worry, bubble sort works for all the integers regardless of it being positive or negative. So make sure that you guys are picking this up. Head to the comment section. You can connect with me on LinkedIn. And if you're on LinkedIn, just go to the comment section there. Just paste a quick screenshot of the code that you guys have implemented. I'll be more than happy to help you out if you guys have uh, messed up anywhere. Because this, again, as I just mentioned, is critical. Everything that I've covered is going to be helpful for your next interviews where someone is going to ask you bubble sort. And I bet you can ace all of that right now. So ladies and gentlemen, make sure you subscribe to Learn with Anirudh because in the further episodes, we still have four algorithms that we need to take a look at. Insertion sort, selection sort, merge sort and quick sort. We're going to be discussing all of that in the exact order that's mentioned. So if you subscribe, you guys will be the first ones to take a look at it. 
So I'll see you guys on the next episode. So thank you so much for tuning into this one. Have a great day ahead.